So if we take the American Standard thread and put it in the metric here, you can see it'll thread in, and it'll thread in easier, but you can see how it shakes. That shaking won't hold pressure. The brake fluid will leak out or hiss out. What we need to do is thread in the correct thread, and it, it will thread in tight, but still glide in smoothly. You don't want it to be shaking around. You can see when we thread that one in, this is tight. So we wanna just take it in carefully. You can see that glides in smoothly, but tight. And that's the type of thread that we want where it'll hold the pressure and really press firmly against that double flare. So if you get your brake line, and normally they have these fittings on here, and if you compare it to your old fitting, and then you find the one that fits, it looks like it'll fit. It looks like the right size. It looks like the threads will mesh. This fitting here is the correct size. It has cleaner threads so we can see that it looks like it'll fit in and thread in. It's very close. But if you look closer at the threads, it's hard to see they aren't meshing perfectly. If we take this and take it on this thread gauge, this is a millimeter thread gauge. If we put it on, you can see that fits perfectly into the 1.0. So this is a 1.0, but this, if I try to fit on the 1.0, it just doesn't fit as nicely as this in the 24. It's the 24 right there. So these threads are slightly different, but if you try to put this in, it won't thread in. We've done that before and you'll have to totally It'll totally halt the brake job because it's like, why is it not going in? It's because this is just a slightly different thread and you need to make sure you have the exact thread. So this one's the metric and this is the standard American. This is a 3 8 24 and then this is a 10 millimeter 1.0. light, you can really see the difference. These threads don't mesh perfectly because they need to. You can see there's light going through and that makes a big difference. If I take the old fitting and the new fitting here and I put these together, you can see they mesh perfectly and you almost can't even see the light behind it. That's what you're looking for is a perfect fit. Whenever we bought this nickel copper line at the local auto parts store, they don't sell it with the right fittings. We went to two auto parts stores and they don't have the right fittings on there. So we have to kind of build the brake line. So if we take the old brake line from the car and we'll kind of just place it there. What, we'll, what I'll do is try to get the right size by moving it like this. And then we have the size right there. We'll go about another two inches just to give us some slack. We can then cut it there. Then we'll not use these fittings, take them off, and put these new fittings that were also at the local auto parts store, put those on, and then those will screw in to the pipe that we need. Now to tighten this on here, we're gonna take these vice grips that grab in three points so it evenly distributes the pressure. We're gonna clip it on just like that and tighten it up just a little bit, a little bit. There we go. Now we can take the wrench and really make sure this is going on tight that's nice and tight on there. Now we'll go ahead and loosen up the bleeder screw and go ahead and pump the brakes. And you can see all that air is coming out and we're really getting all that air out of the system. So once all that air gets out, you'll see the brake fluid starting to run up to the bottle. Okay, so I just filled up another whole bottle and I didn't see any air go through the tube, so we know we have all the air out. Now we have everything down on the ground and we can go ahead and take it for a test drive and see how well it works. Okay, so now it seems like it stops well. The brakes seem to be functioning properly and 